Erdman Reeves from Arizona State and Harvard Education Graduate School. Since 2011, Dr. Yazimans has designed and directed the College Fund's Tribal, College, and University Early Childhood Education Initiatives. Dr. Yazimans' research has focused on documenting Native teachers' instructional practices and conceptions of culturally appropriate curriculum through communities of inquiry, con contributing to a growing evidence-based practices that are inclusive of Native epistemology, language, and tribally defined outcomes. In 2016, she was acknowledged for her contributions to education as a 2016 recipient of the Harvard University Alumni Council Award for Outstanding Contributions to Education. In 2017, Dr. Yazimitz was appointed by President Barack Obama yeah, that sounds so good, as a member of the Board of Directors <laughs> of the National Board for Education Sciences. Dr. Yazimitz has published ex extensively. These are the titles of some of her publications. From a place deep inside, culturally appropriate curriculum as the embodiment of Navajo Ness in classroom pedagogy. Creating culture in the here and now, regenerating rituals and purposeful epistemologies. Native teachers' beliefs and practices, choosing language and cultural revitalization over uniformity and standardization. <laughs> Tribal College and University Early Childhood Education Initiatives, strengthening systems of care and learning with Native communities from birth to career. Collective work and inquiry, transforming early childhood education within Native communities. <coughs> Dr. Yasimitz has also received over $9 million in grant funding. But what I would like to say personally is that Dr. Yasimitz's life work and scholarship embodies the ideals and the theme of this conference profoundly ethical and methodologically innovative research in the service of educational equity. Her Sacred Little Ones project, focused on early childhood education and teachers' own inquiries and theorizations of practice, has been the inspiration and guiding ideal for my own work, and one powerful, powerful model, I believe, for the future of ethnography. Let's give Dr. Yazimin a warm welcome. <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much. Um, I want to share a couple of my own thank yous before I begin. Uh, thank you to uh, Dr. Gadsden and Campano for the honor to share the American Indian College work in early child education and community-based uh, inquiry. I also want to thank you, uh, send a thank you to our uh, ethnography forum coordinators and committee for welcoming all of us as what they um, name as scholars of all levels to share research and methodological innovations. So thank you for creating that space for us to share. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to also share a special thank you to the scholars that I met yesterday, Chloe, Brian, Danielle, Rihanna, and Yordanda for visiting with me yesterday during our Senior Scholars Brown Bag Lunch. Our dialogue provided me with increased inspiration and confirmation of our commitment to the future of ethnography and education. And from that space, I'm honored to serve as the Forum's Practitioner Day plenary speaker. I celebrate with all of you the 40th anniversary of the Forum and the 32nd Practitioner Inquiry Day. Thank you. Yat e tarjin yat yinsha, kore kontra ninshlin, kore chi i bakish chin, kore wanhe dashi che, ta chi i dashi nala, akut a, a san ninshlin. Welcome and good morning. I am Tarajin Yazimint. I am of the water, the salt water clan, born for the bitter water clan. My maternal grandparents are the Edgewater people, and my paternal grandfathers are the Red Streak into the Water people. And in this way, I'm a Navajo woman. The way that I am a Navajo woman is directly connected to the way in which I am a researcher. The way in which I view and experience the world is directly 
tied to the way I am a Navajo woman. This identity is my intimate bias. On the other side of invisibility is a place that I and our collective work reside. On the other side of invisibility is the place where every day we build upon what is working. On the other side of invisibility is the place where everyone has a shared responsibility to make our collective work visible to ourselves. On the other side of invisibility, we set an ambitious course to transform the world. Do you know this place? Have you been to this place? And have you contributed to the making of this place? I ask you this question and I want you to hold this question with these questions with you as I speak. I'll say them again. Do you know of this place? Have you been to this place? And have you contributed to the making of this place? Today we all enter the forum as practitioners. It is my intention to speak with you practitioner to practitioner. This talk is a celebration of the teachers of our communities, teachers on a continuum of practice, from parents to elders, from children to their teachers, to those who fight alongside our collective efforts for children to hold aspirations, to experience transformative acts of social and political change. I'm excited to share my hope with you, and my hope is for you to connect with the work and tailor it and apply knowledge to your respective spheres of work. We are practitioners on a continuum of practice. Our collective work is important. I believe we all bring what Sarah Lawrence Lightfoot calls intimate bias, a deep knowledge of place, phenomena, and relationships. And this work, my intimate bias, is knowing research from within community works. I hold the intimate bias that about purposes of research, that research knowledge must be activated for the greater sustainability of our communities. Change is why I engage in this work of collective inquiry, and I believe that some of our work is not for public consumption, but, our dis our, our, but for our discoveries, we are leading towards social and political change and transformation. On the other side of invisibility is a place that I and our collective work reside. On the other side of invisibility is the place where every day we build upon what is working. On the other side of invisibility is a place where everyone has a shared responsibility to make the collective work visible to ourselves. On the other side of invisibility, we set an ambitious course to transform the world. This collective inquiry draws upon theoretical, philosophical, and pedagogical inspiration from existing scholarship that advocates for increased connections between home and school. Advocacy for meaningful engagement in educational pro processes and decision making of communities and families has not wavered. There are ample cases of community-based educational change and reform described in research impacting national, tribal, intertribal, indigenous discourses about education, reform, and transformation. More indigenous scholars have intentionally carved spaces in which indigenous communities are centrally positioned to share community-based research to demonstrate the power of indigenous methodologies. Other researchers center educational inquiry within tribal colleges and tribal communities. These research contributions set the stage for tribal colleges and universities and their respective communities to reimagine Native early childhood education, drawing upon the power of indigenous knowledge in education, imagination, and transformation. The American Indian College Fund is a national not-for-profit not organization and there are two areas of work that we focus on in this organization. One area that we're historically known for is raising funds for scholarships for college. 
the new emergent area that we've developed over the years that I've been at the College Fund is the area of research and programming. And it is within this space that I'm going to share our collective work. Eight years ago, I was invited to launch the College Fund's Tribal College and Early Childhood Initiatives. Starting with Kayesha, the Sacred Little Ones project, we grew from one project into initiative of a number of programs that we see on the slide. And today we are a movement across nine tribal colleges with over $9.5 million invested in community-based educational transformation. Co-development is critical to, be, to start from the beginning as a key approach. And I want to highlight a little bit of each area of our programming. Starting with Wakayasha, we, we focused on five areas of work teachers, children's development, native language and culture, family and community engagement, and thinking about the lifelong learning trajectory from birth to adulthood. Those were what we named our five domains of work. The names of the tribal colleges that are currently and have historically engaged in this initiative are located across a number of tribal communities serving hundreds of different tribes across their areas of work. Southwestern Indian Polytechnic Institute from New Mexico, Elisabet College in the North Slope of Alaska, Northwest Indian College in Washington State, College of Menominee Nation from Wisconsin, Sitting Bull College from North Dakota, Kalina Bay Community College from Michigan, Salish Kootenai College from Montana, Fond du Lac Commu Tribal Community College in Minnesota, and Little Bighorn College. All of these tribal colleges have contributed to our work in, in which we go in cycles of collective, uh, cycles of, of educational change. Our community-based practice is guided by these areas of work, which may, for many of you who are practitioners and researchers in community, uh, <coughs> recognize cycles of work. The bullets that I want to feature here is the vision. The vision is both looking back at our historical work that we've gone face in our communities and building knowledge and moving forward toward developing systems that work for our communities and help us integrate our current knowledge in our communities. The implementation phase is about trying and trying again, as well as celebrating our emergent stories we're working together. Authentic assessment is what many of us might call sort of the evaluation of our work, but we call it authentic assessment for a reason. We want to be thinking about the questions of our impact, making our journey from the start and to the finish as we write that story of our community. Reflection, dissemination, and, and then reflection again is about sharing that collective story and envisioning a future together, and then we re-enter our next phase of our work when co-visioning, co-implementation into another cycle. We have to think simultaneously in concentric circles of intersecting work. In some cases, we call upon creative and innovative ideas to link and connect our vision to the work of ultimate outcomes down the road. And while we also prepare for no longer being there as the ultimate result of our collective endeavor, what I mean by that is that in our communities uh, across Indian country, leadership changes over often. And so we have to intentionally plan for what happens when we're no longer here. In the work that we engage in, we ask ourselves, when I'm no longer here, who is behind me, to take on the work and move it forward. Are we all on the same page in terms of our plan? Do we have a strategy to move forward with? Do we have areas of focus of work? Alignment, relationship, and knowledge spectrum are very important in this work that we engage in. Our, our alignment is with our strategic cycles of educational transformation and our five domains that we set off to in, engage in. The relationship is the work of our tribal colleges, our early learning centers, and the shared vision for children. We're constantly held in relationship to that goal to one another. The idea of our knowledge 
spectrum is starting, is, is working with starting place questions and moving to shared space questions. The idea of, of starting place questions starts with those that bring the questions to our communities or the community comes forward with their own questions, we start there. Ultimately moving to a space where we share some similar questions so that we can engage in collective inquiry. In order to set the stage for this intentional transformative act, we build on the strengths of our communities. We place families as central visionaries in the work so that we may move towards transformative moments, which we call restorative teachings. Our collective work must result in these transformative acts, movement towards those restorative teachings. Today, the TCU, or the Tribal College and Early Childhood Initiative, and the collective strategy, and the concentric and intersecting circles of work have surfaced as to why, have surfaced the question, why talk about on the other side of invisibility? How do we bring to national research discourse the ways indigenous educational contexts and the people within those spaces, how do we bring to that knowledge space that we have solutions, that we have responses, that we have systems to think about? I want you to think with me on this slide. This is my think with me slide. It's still in development. And oftentimes where I start with our conversations is to split things into two spaces and to think about them. And the dichotomy is not to be oversimplistic. It's meant to make something very visible to us and to help us understand the complexity between the two and the relationship. So join me and think with me about invisibility and visibility. What is invisibility? Invisibility is how Native people, Native communities, and Native research are seen when looking from the mainstream. Born out of onslaught of research studies, that exclude insignificant numbers of Native participants and population samples, the pervasive myths of Native communities as lost in the past, the co-optation of our arts, our science, our literature, education, and inquiry in Native communities by non-Native artists, scientists, writers, educators, and researchers. How do I make sense of this? and make sense of it from an educational and research perspective. How do we make sense of this from the motivations of different purposes or intent? Is it invisibility or is it disappeared? Is it visibility or restorative? My initial thinking about the concepts is informed by historical texts. Invisibility is connected with power. We Native people aren't invisible. We were disappeared over time like the dinosaurs. Education for Native people in the US was a result of a land deal. Forced education was an investment to disappear Native people with assimilation as its tool. Inter-research research to document the disappearing natives. Evolve research, research to document the failures of the federal educational and political system to assimilate native people. Evolve research, research to exclude, based on methodological criteria, American Indians, Alaska natives are disappeared from national studies. Less than 1% of the population, statistically insignificant. If statistically significant equals science, then what does statistically insignificant equal to? I'm going to toggle between two things here. My colleague, Dr. Randall Aki, and I wrote a piece called 
counting experience among the least counted. In this work, we examine the literature and begin to pose a new challenge to the field of educational research. How to understand American Indian populations from the perspective of tribes themselves. Our inquiry at the time was building new ways of thinking versus merely problematizing the issues or critiquing. We moved to a space of developing an approach, a small scale quantitative study, to a place to place our data on the map. I want to note that there are a number of national studies that exist that include an oversampling of American Indian Alaska Native populations. We have the NAEP uh, under the National Indian Education Study, and then the ECHOS B and K. And through, though according to um, the National Center for Educational Statistics, their report to the committee that I served on which is the National Indian Education Study Advisory Committee, the report we received was that as of about 2010 or so, we were not, people were not accessing this special sample data as a secondary analysis opportunity, okay? It exists, but people were not using it. So the special data on American Indian and Alaska Natives, there is this uh, restricted data use, but you can access it as, as, as a, a sample of data to look at national uh, samples of American Indian Alaska Natives. We do not forget that the context and the tribe and the region is important in this conversation, but this data can't inform specific tribes about educational specifics about their children, and this is what they're asking for. So we have data, but it's not meeting the needs of our tribes. We have information and ability to do the studies but does it apply, does the broad sample apply to our communities in order for us to make specific decisions about our children? Now, however, we move straight into what looks like a void from the mainstream side. It gets us to the other side of invisibility. On the other side of invisibility are vibrant indigenous communities of educational <coughs> practitioners engaged in collective inquiry to transform native education from within tribal communities. Reframing the inquiry, the stance from within tribes commu tribal communities opens up the possibilities of seeing and understanding the ways in which indigenous and tribal communities are vibrant and powered to address historical inequities, including invisibility. Standing on the other side of invisibility, we witness Native teachers, parents, community members, and their early learning partners engage in innovations in cultural-based curriculum and education and community transformation. These highly visible communities contribute knowledge from research and practice. Within early learning environments across Native communities, knowledge that strengthens early learning for all children, not just the native children, all children. So let's take a look at the concept beyond invisibility. Now that we have a sense of this idea of invisibility as disappeared, I want us to think about how do we see a way to move forward? Because what we often see in the scholarship is that we get into the place of dismantling decolonizing, deframing, right? We, we do all of that work and then we stop. Okay, we get paralyzed. And I want us to move into a space where we're not paralyzed. We want to move and avoid the paralysis if we over deconstruct or dismantle. How do we put it back together? This was an amazing conversation with my colleagues yesterday at the Brown Bag lunch was to talk about the idea of being builders. Teachers and practitioners are builders in our community. We build knowledge. We are engaged in thinking about what's working. How do we move our students from one space to the next space, to one question to the next question? If we move in the space of possibilities, we move, to the, we move the work 
to the, on, the side, on the other side of invisibility. We ask our own questions. We approach inquiry from within. We make our work and our communities visible. We step out into the center of the dialogue. When we change the discourse, we move to the other side of invisibility. What happens when we ask our own questions, analyze our own inquiries, and make sense of our own impact on our own communities? These questions are starting place questions. And as we begin to identify our collective questions, we begin to move forward into the space beyond invisibility. Historical, historically, educational inquiry move from outside in, outsiders like government, policy makers, religious groups, and re uh, research institutions looked in to understand us through predetermined lenses, criteria, phenomena. I often wondered about the processes of looking in. What are the ways in which looking in shaped our tools, our processes of research? Does the act of documenting really make our communities visible? And in what ways? Good ways? Do we show our weaknesses? Do we show the complexities? Today, tribal communities have strong and active roles to play in research. We have our own questions to help solve complex problems. What happens in our communities from within makes us visible to ourselves. <coughs> what does this process look like? If we engage in community-based inquiry and find important information that focus on strengths about ourselves, what happens? And what becomes of the role of the researcher? This is a question I ask myself often in the work that I'm engaged in is, as a researcher, though I'm an indigenous educator, what happens to my role in these spaces? This talk is about the processes and approaches and the philosophy that drive my work. It's not necessarily about their research, okay? So I want to make sure that we're now seeing the movement and me weaving in and out of this space of invisible invisibility. We're not merely engaged in the insider outsider debate at this point, and I want to make that clear too, because we might immediately go there and think this is a discussion about who's in and who's out. What we have found in our collective inquiry is that collective includes those who have the shared. Uh, share the space of the question, okay? So this is, this is a different way of thinking about the work. It's a discussion and thinking about what we do with the information that is surfaced by the different purposes and perspectives that frame the inquiry. It is about knowing one's place <coughs> within social, political, intellectual context of our communities. And when we name ourselves within that space, we, the researcher, Tara Jean, becomes visible to the others in the room. <coughs> when we use our language, we make our words heard. And think, the way, think back to the way I introduced myself. Using my people's introduction and protocol helps me into this space and relate to you. When we say, I want my baby, to go to tribal college, we make our educational journey purposeful. When our youth say, I want to be a teacher, we create the next generation of practitioners on a continuum of practice, we make it visible. All of these acts on the other side of invisibility make ourselves visible to us. We see the impact of our own inquiry. Tribal colleges and their tribal partners have a critical role to play in this work. In our work, we honor 
the work in community by holding key understandings as we enter our collective inquiry. The work, the good work is going ongoing. From our collective work, we learn it is critical to see the good. And we're talking about in the same frame that Sarah Lawrence Lightfoot speaks about goodness. It's not just about good and bad as a polar opposite. It's about the complexity of creating goodness. The good work is happening on a continuum of practice. We have many options for how and where to start. Indigenous language, knowledge, and protocols, both the implicit and explicit, shape philosophical and relational approaches. Our protocols, who and in what cultural role starts a meeting, or who in what role asks questions, or who is given the authority to tell story. Another <coughs> protocol that we, we pay attention to is research of storytelling. We have to have a plan on when we can tell the story of the project. In indigenous communities, there are times of the year in which story can be told, and perhaps we shift <coughs> when and how we tell our program story. TCU's tribal colleges and universities are intellectual centers of their communities. Structurally, they appear as modern institutions. Philosophically, they engage a, a post-secondary education that aligns with tribal needs and works toward sustainability of local and tribal-based knowledge. Faculty in these spaces are able to shift their role ask different questions of their students, find ways to enact authentic care and strong student success strategies. During our conversation yesterday, one of our colleagues, Brian, asked a question about, well, what does this look like in indigenous spaces? What does culturally appropriate practice look like? And for me, as the outside researcher coming in and learning with, my observation was a conversation with the dean of students who talked about student success in a different way. And he said that when a student came late and later and later on their assignment, his first question wasn't about the assignment. His first question was about, how are you doing? And what can I do to help you? He started there and then moved to the place of talking about the, the abstract assignment. And he was more about thinking about how to reframe time and timelines because he had the intimate bias about what students face in our communities. The visibility of poverty, the impact of substance abuse. All of these things are operating in his mind when he decides what question am I going to start with, with the student to keep them engaged. And to me, that is the hidden aspect that we want to make visible to everybody. We want our universities, our communities, uh, to understand how to reshape our protocols, our timelines, our relationship to one another. The story of community-based inquiry from, indige from within indigenous educational context is an exciting, an inspirational story of collective action. Across communities, visions are shared, like this one from the Inupiaq on the North Slope. They state, today we have control over our educational system. We must know from being, um, we must know now being to uh, assess whether or not our school system is truly becoming an Inupiaq school system. We must have the Inupiaq-centered orientation in all areas of instruction. Is this statement of a people who are invisible? Is the criteria for success articulate? Is the potential outcome of this vision of direct benefit to the Inupiaq children and their community? How about examining the Nupiaq learning framework? 
with this framework, are the Inupiaq children set up to succeed? Will the village thrive? The Inupiaq learning framework was developed by a group of Inupiaq elders who came together after uh, Ebsen on a North Slope claimed that they have control of their education system. Therefore, we should have frameworks that guide how we teach teachers, how we teach our history, how we teach about environment, community, history, the individual, their roles. This permeate the entire com concept, the language, the Inupiaq language, is the way in which they describe their story about what they will focus on for their children. It's through this kind of work and collective inquiry that we bring this to vi further visibility. We had the opportunity, they've been holding this for over 25 years and working from it. And when I saw it, I said, the world has to see this, but you have to bring it forward in the way that you want to bring it forward. And so there is a piece about uh, the Nupiaq Learning Framework. You can find it in the Journal of American Indian Education, but you can also find it here posted on their site for use by any community to think differently about what does a curricular framework look like? And what's the story behind it that helps guide the work that we're engaging to transform our community, to restore our practices, to restore our teaching? <clears throat> this work is happening, and it's not only in universities. And this is the beauty of the intellectual engagements happening. We care what we discover about ourselves and about how to retain and restore indigenous practices. Yes, we deal with conflicting theories within our communities, ideologies, analyses, interpretations, and seeing ourselves as indigenous and contemporary people in a contemporary world. <laughs> we also see ourselves as knowledge creators. Knowledge creators about children's <coughs> development and family, and community engagement, how to restore indigenous languages, starting with the babies, with the teachers, creators who build systems of care and learning across many tribal communities. On the other side of invisibility, do we develop possibility of new ways to being present, being mindful of change, and being restore resourceful to ensure beyond the trend solution, what I call the package drop. We've seen it happen in our, in our schools, right? The helicopter comes in and drops curriculum in your, your school and it either goes into a closet or somehow mechanically distributed to your classrooms. You have one to two days, three days training and you implement. <laughs> this idea of being resourceful is critical in our work. It helps us avoid the package drop that has been dropping in our communities since forced education was introduced to indigenous communities. It's essential for us to recognize that we don't have to take the package and we don't have to unwrap it, but that we can create our own. Some examples from our collective work at tribal colleges and the college fund we follow the questions that we see here. What do we see? We see a historical partnership with tribal colleges and universities between the college fund and these institutions over 30 years of work, and we're planning the next 30 years and beyond. Systems that work is what we see. Tribal colleges with early learning centers, tribal college to tribal college, tribal college to national discourse. We also see growing contribution to practice and research. What do we imagine? We imagine restorative practices, speakers of native language, teachers who can do it all. We really need it. We really need it. Teachers who can do it all. Institutions that reflect our protocols, our lifeways. Indigenous accredited institutions 
with place names back to geographic locations. Rivers have names, mountain has names, our farms are sitting on lands that have names. These are named places. We are reconnecting. What's working? We witness defined purpose that makes our work distinctive. Creative blossoming, ability to imagine, doing without fear, finding intellectual and financial resources from within our communities. How are we working as a collective? The collective emphasizes relationships. <coughs> it emphasizes starting the work. We aren't waiting for a solution from outside. We build it over time. And as a collective, we celebrate the milestones and process. The celebration is the documentation that it happened. It's just like ceremony. Ceremony documents the moment in which transformation has surfaced and emerged. The lessons emergent from this inquiry has implications for our families, educators, and researchers working in early childhood education, educational context, and tribal communities. First, the process by which educational education change occurs is an important area to continue to explore and document. We know this. We're seeing this. And while a number of tribal and indigenous communities have documented their approaches to address revitalization of indigenous languages, education, and traditional practices significant to the next generation of young children, there's still more to learn from the diversity of approaches to educational transformation that stem from indigenous theories and visions for improving our children's future. We're also interested in increased research in this area that will reveal the ways in which restorative teachings and knowledge can inform our approaches to educational change. Indigenous scholars have contributed to this national dialogue wherein educators are encouraged to grow practice and theories from within tribal communities and their knowledge systems. And when I name indigenous scholars in this sentence, I'm talking about the parents in an early learning center at Sippy Tribal College where they use um, photo voice as their methodology to document their curricular practice in the classroom and in at home. I'm talking about them as the scholars in this work. We learn that tribal colleges and universities are powerful institutions from which change can be generated, supported, and sustained. Tribal colleges are viewed as intellectual centers and within institutions as long as long term can emerge from this relationship of an institution that was built by the people. Efforts we suggest to build capacity with tribal colleges to engage in collective inquiry across the tribal college system. And the work, this work, bringing them together is a priority in the research inquiry. Our educational researchers consider new areas of inquiry. We are thinking about how to engage in systematic research conducted from within our communities leading to new innovative solutions to questions related to educational equity, access, community change. We play a very critical role in this work to restore native informed approaches, frameworks, theories, and increase family engagement, teacher development, and systemic change. On our journey to systemic change, we must be able to document what is our vision and our theory of change. The vision shapes the institutions that teach the teachers, that interact with the community, that ultimately restore our communities. A group of tribal college presidents, community members, and project directors got together in 2013 to discuss what is the theory? What is the vision that we're engaged in here? 
educational sovereignty of tribal nations is rooted in their cultures and languages, enacted through systems and structures of tribes. We support tribal government's relationships between institutions, children, their families, their communities. Those relationships are seamless. Tribal colleges name themselves as leading restorative collaborations, inclusive of community-based participatory research, educator training, curriculum development, and culturally appropriate assessment. It's quite an ambitious vision. I read it and I always feel like, oh my gosh, we came up with this to name where we're headed. How do we do that? It's, it's amazing to have people come together from different tribes, from different communities, to come with a common vision, to really be able to take that back and have that move into the space that they're using to build new systems of care and learning for young children. So our contributions from the other side of invisibility. How does what we are learning serve other collective inquiries? And all of you represent other collective inquiries. On the other side of invisibility are vibrant indigenous communities of educational practicer, practitioners engaged in collective inquiry to transform education from within our own communities. If your educational community has been disappeared by large-scale studies or mainstream research, consider the following ideas for application of work toward visibility. Focus on work starting from within your community. For this point, it is important to know that what I mean when I say your community, it's whatever community that you are engaged in might be. You have to understand your belonging and relationship to the work that you're doing with the community. So it's broad but very specific <laughs> about your goal. You have to really have consciousness about your belonging. And belonging is reciprocal, so it's not I belong there and I'm going to hang out. It's there's been a ceremony about you being a member. <laughs> there's a protocol, no, that, that could be hidden. And if you're not belonging, you may not see it yet. So look for how you become. Start your collective work by identifying the strengths. Work locally for a while. Incubute, in, in, incubate your collective as a group. Incubate your ideas. You need time to develop the systems that reflect your cultural and linguistic gifts. This is really important. Everybody wants to rush because we are very used to the ambulance zipping into our communities that are underfunded, historically disenfranchised, and we're so ready to take the ambulance and the sho electric shocks on our community very quickly, right? <coughs> Be careful. Be intentional about giving yourselves the space and time. When deciding where and how to start, look with others. With those who know history, with those who ask great questions, those who have different perspective, and those who have large dreams. Looking together will help make the work exciting. Making meaning as a collective is great. Don't confuse decision-making with democratic practices of everyone gets a vote approach. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about thinking beyond and paying attention to the protocols for deciding and protocols for how you take on shared responsibility for decision-making. That's what I'm talking about. It's a negotiation. It's not everybody, let's go around and see and the voters win. We're talking about a different way of of understanding the collective. <laughs> this is so important. Be prepared to start from scratch again and again and again and again and again. This is hard work and we are, we, we want to improve our work if we pay attention to the larger goal of strong systems of care and learning for our babies journey from 
young babies to their adulthood. We want to take time to envision what success looks like. Take time there, really sit with it. That's how the Inupiaq framework comes to life. They spent years and time in many, many conversations at the community level to decide what does success look like? What does that successful 18-year-old Inupiaq male look like? What did he experience at the different phases of his life? What is the success that brings him to adulthood so he can sustain the community in their practices? Decide on what your collective indicators of success are. Be careful of using others' success indicators. As those make you fall off the map, you want to stay on your map. Draw your own map. Conduct your own research. And finally, over time, Believe and come to deeply know that one day, nine months, five, eight, 25 years is a short time frame to change the world. Live and do more on the other side of invisibility. Thank you. system is tied to an economic question down the road. Does it allow us access economically into a system that we almost are forced to participate in? Um, 
if you enter from the other side, and I like to use the nucleus as an example, they are able to engage in this kind of thinking and work because they are that last frontier. Lots of people don't want to live on the North Slope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are protected in a real interesting way by their land and their resources. People don't want to live, who are used to uh, contemporary amenities, they don't want to live in this harsh space. For them, that's the beauty of where they are right now. And this is, this is a very important understanding of who we are as people and individuals and how we move and live in the world and then these institutions, educational systems and institutions that take that away from us. They pull us out of that into this other space. That's the communist way I can think about answering your question. It, it, it does take some time to understand the context in the United States and the historical relationships between different types of communities that have been historically disenfranchised and disappeared. We're removed and sliced away from the bigger picture of the American profile. And, and we're trying to be very clear about where does that happen? It can happen in the textbook and it can happen when the teacher says, when I look at my classroom, they're all the same because you've just now erased everybody <laughs> in the room and their differences and their distinctive gifts. So that, even in that moment, there's a small slice comes off and they say, you're all the same. I don't want to be the same. <laughs> I'm not the same. And so th I hope that that helps yeah. later. Yeah. Okay. I want to say I'm